It's Wednesday, September the 30th, and welcome to Daily Grace. Let's go straight to the questions. I got two of them here for you. First question is this. If God is a God who wants restoration, why would they make the theological point, speaking of the biblical authors, why would they make the theological point through a story in which all but one family is wiped out in a flood and denied the ability to restore their relationship with God? That is an excellent question. So the way they would look at it is this. The world is filled with chaos. That's the thing that they fear the most. Disorder. Things are falling apart. There's suffering. There's pain. There's injustice. There's violence. And it's just exploding. That's what you see in the story of Noah. Like reading up to that flood story. It's just proliferating. People chose their own way. They decided that they wanted to base their lives on themselves and not on God. That's the backdrop to all this. And so what happened is there is this explosion in pain and in suffering. So coming now to the question, they would have seen from their standpoint that the world is always descending into chaos, that it's proliferating all over the world, yet God is always coming in ready, willing, and able to turn things around, that God's not bringing suffering and pain and violence, that we are bringing it because the decisions that we make. That's what the story is showing us. But God is always there, even though we've rebelled against him. He should be, like all the other gods, angry at us and say, that serves you right. Instead, he lovingly, graciously, kindly is coming and hitting that divine reset button for us. God is a God of order. They knew the world was filled with violence and pain and suffering. But what the biblical writers are telling us is that God is always there, ready to turn things around for us. That is what the story is all about. Now, your second question is also an excellent one. In the Daily Grace recordings from Tuesday, Wednesday, and this morning, what I think I'm hearing from the seven points is that the story of Noah may not have happened in the way that it was written, but rather is based. Now, I'm going to break in right there real quick. It did not happen in the way that it was written. Okay, it did happen in the way that it was written. Totally, 100%. But it was not written to us. It was written for us. To the people who it was written to, it happened exactly the way because they understood the genre. Both writer and reader understood the genre. They knew what was going on. It was their culture. 100% understood. It is literally true to the culture to whom it was written to. We've got to get ourselves there. This is like reading somebody else's mail or somebody all of a sudden just dive bombing into an intense conversation. You're having somebody else, they have no clue, and all of a sudden they come in and they hear you say one little thing and you're like, don't take me out of context. Same deal right here. We're jumping in to their culture 3,800 years ago-ish, okay? Right. But rather is based loosely off the story of a flood that did happen. My question is this, and this is a great, this is a great question. If this biblical story uses myth and hyperbole to make a theological point, and a lot of people have this question, here it comes, how can we take other parts of the Bible at face value? Like the life of Jesus and the miracles he performed. That is fantastic. I think the first thing I would say is this, is that what we need to look for is what they were looking for. That is what we're after. Our culture is asking a question that their culture isn't asking. And because it is written to their culture, we need to get in, in the right lane, so to speak, with their culture and ask the exact same question. Now, we can figure some things out. Some things are obvious in what is metaphor, what is hyperbole. Some of those things just... They just make sense. They're right, right, you know, right there for us. Deuteronomy chapter seven: Kill everybody, then don't intermarry with them. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, so okay. So obviously, there's some serious hyperbole at play uh, there, or some metaphors. God's walking in the garden in the book of Genesis. Well, it's pretty standard Orthodox belief that God is a spirit, doesn't have a body. So how is God? How's God walking? Or God says, Abel's blood in the book of Genesis is crying out to me from the ground. Okay, so we can get that. Some other others, we have to do a little more hard work, which is actually what the Bible tells us to do. It tells us to put in the 
hard work to figure this out. But the biggest point here is this, not to get caught up in things that they're not caught up in. Like, was there a global flood? Was there an ark? How did all those animals, 35,000 of them, from all over the entire planet get on the ark? How did every single person, Eskimos and people from Australia, make their way to Egypt to see Joseph, to stand before that one man, we're told, and ask for food? How'd they make it when the whole world is under a global flood? Okay. What they're asking. Jonah and the whale. How do you get in that whale for three days? Okay. That's not the question they're asking. We need to, we need to focus on the question they're asking. Who is God? What are the stories about Jesus walking on the water or Jonah being in the whale? I don't want to answer that one today because I am going to later this week. What are they revealing to us about God? Because the Bible is God's revelation to us about who God is. That is the question about Noah. What is it revealing to us about God and not getting caught up in the details because that is not what they were caught up in. They were caught up in the main point of the story and what is that revealing to us about God? And the story, the story of Noah and the flood is revealing to us that God is gracious, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in mercy, and he loves you so much that it doesn't matter how much chaos you have caused in your own life. He wants to restore you and redeem you and bring order back to your life. That, that is what we should all be asking ourselves. What does it tell us about God? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, that you reveal to us who you are. Help us, Lord, to fully embrace you in our lives. In Christ's name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow for Daily Grace.